Working quickly in Excel is all about knowing the right shortcuts. In this video, I'll run through the 50 Excel shortcuts you need to know. In this video, I will cover 50 Excel shortcuts that you need to know. I'm going to run through these rapid fire. So if you need to replay anything or watch us at a slower speed, feel free to watch at your own pace. Number one, control M opens up a new workbook. Number two, control S. This will save your workbook so you can save it as a specific file. If I want to call this book two, I can hit control S again and keep saving. If I want to save this in a specific place or save it with a different name, I can use F12 and that will pull up save as, and that will give me the option to save it as a different name or to save it in a different place on my computer. Next control O, this will help you open any other workbook you have in your file. And then if you want to create a new worksheet, you can use shift F11 and that will create a new worksheet at the bottom of your file. So now I have sheet two. If I press it again, I have sheet three, sheet four, and I can keep doing this all day. If I want to delete a worksheet, I can use alt E L and this will delete a worksheet. Alt E L will keep deleting worksheets all the way. One super important call. This is permanent in Excel. You cannot undo deleting sheets. So be very, very careful with that shortcut. If you want to copy a worksheet, so let's say I put copy here, I can go down and I can use control drag on my worksheet. And now I have sheet one parentheses two, as I have copied my worksheet control drag, very, very fast way to copy worksheets. Next one, control Z undo, probably my personal favorite shortcut I use in Excel. So if I write the, and then hit control Z, it will undo that. If I delete copy and use control Z, it will undo everything I did. Control Y will redo your action. So control Z to undo control Y to redo. So copy. So if I put copy here and use control C, I can copy this and then control V will paste this in a separate section in my file. If I use control X, it will cut the selection. So control V will remove the original cell. So control Z to copy, which will keep the original cell control X to cut, which will remove the additional cell control V is to paste, which we have already covered. But what if you want to paste in something specific? So if I made this cell a black, and I only wanted the value, I can use control alt V to pull up the paste special menu. And then I have all these different selections. So if I used control alt V V, I can just paste in the values from that cell. Or if I copy this and control alt V T, I can paste just the formats without the value. So control alt V will give you a number of different options, formulas, values, formats. There are operations. You can transpose your data, a number of different things. So that is copying cells. You can also fill cells in Excel. So if I highlight this range and use control R, I have filled these cells to the right. If I highlight down and use control D, I have filled these cells down. Same thing as if I hit control Z, I can do the same thing with control C, copy, highlight my selection and press control V, but often it is easier to use control R and control D to fill right and fill down. F2, this will help you edit cells. If I go up here and write edit cells, it overwrites everything in my cell. But if instead I wanted to just F2, it will let me jump into my formula and write copy edit cells. Very, very helpful for when you are trying to manipulate a portion of your formula without having to rewrite the entire thing. Next is F4. So if I highlight this as a selection and I drag this cell to the right, now this formula is referencing F8. If I want to keep this formula referencing cell E8, I can use F4, drag it to the right, and now I have anchored this formula in place. You can use F4 to toggle through a number of different selections. So flexible column, absolute row, absolute column, relative row, purely relative, purely absolute. Next shift F3 will pull up the formula wizard. This is very helpful if you don't know how to use a formula. So if you are just learning X lookup and type X lookup, it will give you the different arguments that the formula requires. And it will tell you, this is what the lookup value is. This is what the lookup array is. This is what the return array is. These are the optional arguments. These are the required arguments and will help you fill in your specific formula. Very, very helpful if you are new to Excel or aren't particularly familiar with a specific formula. Next one is auto sum. So if I put in 20, 20 and use alt equal sign or alt plus 
sign, it will auto sum my values and insert a sum formula for me. If I copy this and let's say I paste it in transpose and use alt plus sign, now I have an auto sum. It will work for both a column and rows. If you want to delete cells, you can highlight a selection and use delete. But what if you want to delete everything, including the formatting? You can highlight everything with control A and then alt H E A will clear everything from your cell. Control shift seven will add an outside border. I find this one's pretty useful. I use this a lot. You can just highlight any selection and then control shift seven will add an outside border wherever you want. If you want to remove borders. So if I highlight the selection and use control shift minus sign or control shift underscore that will remove all borders from your selection. So if I just wanted to highlight one part of this, I can use control shift minus sign or control shift underscore to remove borders from my selection. So next we have change font size. If you wanted these to be bigger, Alt H F S and you can put these as 12. You could put these as three. You could put these as 30, any specific font size you want. You can also change the font color. Alt H F C. And if you want to make these a blue because they're inputs and you want to flag that, you can do that. Alt H F C and then select any specific font color you want. Fill color. Alt H H and you can put in a fill color. So if you wanted a gray, if you wanted a yellow, you can put in any specific fill color to create an artistic masterpiece in Excel. This is hard to read, so I'll actually just toss you a bonus tip here. Alt H E F will clear formats. And now let's run through a number toggle. I find this one is super, super helpful. So control shift one will give you a number particularly helpful with larger values. So if I added two zeros here, now you have this comma, which is really helpful. So control shift one for number control shift three will give you dates. Control shift four will give you currency. Control shift five will give you percentages. Control shift six will give you exponents. I find control shift one, three, four, and five are the ones I use primarily. If you're interested, two will give you times but candidly don't know if I've ever actually used that. So these are the shortcuts. Control one will pull open your format cells option. This is really helpful if you're trying to do something specific in Excel. So if you want a custom number format, if you want to merge cells across selection, if you want to put in some kind of specific font or some kind of fancy border, control one will pull up the format cells option, which gives you greater flexibility for utilizing Excel. So let's talk about our sheets. Our sheet is now called sheet one parentheses two. If I wanted to rename that alt H O R will let me rename sheet. If I want to make that a different color, I can use alt H O T and make this black or any other color I want in Excel's color. So if I like a nice orange, I can do that with alt H O T. One thing that's nice, particularly when you're trying to hand files over is to add comments. So shift F2 will add comments for you. You can put comment. That's pretty helpful. Escape will get you out of that. And you can click through over your file and use shift F2 to add comments. I'll clear everything. And then how have I been navigating? So you can use the arrow keys to move around Excel. Control arrow key will jump to the end of a range. Control right arrow will put you to the far right hand cell. Control down arrow will put you to the bottom cell. Particularly helpful when working with big data sets. So if I insert a sequence of let's say 50 rows and 50 columns and I use control arrow key to the right, it will jump me to my far right column and then control down, it will jump me to the bottom column. So control arrow key, very, very helpful instead of trying to manually move through massive data sets, which is obviously very cumbersome. That's moving around a range. If you want to move through sheets, control page up will move you one sheet to the left. If I add a couple sheets, which reminder shift F 11 does that control page down will move sheets to the right control page up will move you to the left. So very helpful when you're trying to jump around a big model that has a lot of different tabs. So what if you want to insert rows? So I'll just drag this down and what I can use is control shift plus sign or control shift equal sign and insert an entire row that makes it really easy to do. Or if I want to insert a column, I can use control shift plus sign equal sign and insert an entire column. If I want to delete that, I can use control minus sign and delete an entire column or control minus sign and delete an entire row. Very helpful shortcuts for manipulating your spreadsheet. Two great ones here. If you want to select an entire row, shift spacebar will do that for you. And then if you want to select an entire column, control spacebar will do that. If you ever get confused, a helpful heuristic I often use is shift is the longer one that looks more like a row where control potentially looks more like a column. So control spacebar is a column, shift spacebar is a row. These two shortcuts can be very helpful together. So if I use shift spacebar to select an entire row, 
and then control shift plus sign, it automatically inserts a row for me. If I use control space bar to select my entire column, control shift plus sign, it automatically inserts a column. And I can do that in reverse where I can use shift space bar to select my row, control minus sign to remove the row, and then control space bar to select my column, control minus sign to delete my column without having to select which one I want. So let's talk about groups. So if I highlight these two cells and use shift alt right arrow, it will create a group. So if I group these two rows, now I have this handy little group, which I can hide, I can show, and will give me more flexibility for what data I want to present on my sheet. If I want to remove that, I can use shift alt left arrow and that will ungroup my rows. But if I leave those grouped just to walk through our two next shortcuts, I can use alt a H to hide and then alt a J to expand. Really, really helpful. And you can do this with multiple selections too. So if I insert additional groups down here, I can just highlight this whole selection and use Alt A H, which will hide all of my groups, and then Alt A J, which will expand all of my groups. Two great shortcuts to know, especially if you're working with groups. I will ungroup these. And now if I put, let's say, copy one in one of my selections, and I wanted to find just that specific cell, I could use Control F and find copy one. And Excel will either find all of the different selections and tell me these are the cells it's in, or I can use find next and I can circle through the different instances of this value in my cell. That's Control F. You can also use Control H for replace. So Control H, if I wanna replace copy one with copy two, I can replace all of these and that will replace everything. Or I can use Control H and I can replace them one by one. And I can say find next and then I say replace, 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 if I wanna be slightly more surgical about my replacements. So this next one's pretty cool. Control bracket will take you to the precedent cell in a formula. So if I reference cell K21 and I highlight this and use control left bracket, it will take me to that precedent cell. Not that cool in this example, but if I highlighted, let's say sheet six, and I use control left bracket, it will take me to that cell on sheet six that I have referenced. Really, really helpful when walking through someone else's model to understand the logic and how their inputs flow into outputs. So the next one will be with zoom, alt W Q will let you change your magnification. So if you wanna do 50% and zoom out, alt W Q, maybe 200% and zoom in, you can do that really easily with alt W Q. And if I just wanted to look at this specific selection, I could do alt W Q fit selection and Excel would just show me that selection. If you want to reset your sheet and set it to 100% Alt W J will do that for you. That's a free one. I won't charge you for the bonus tip there. Another great one is control home. So control home will put your cursor on cell A1. So if I have cursors all over the place, I can just control home and go through to make sure my cursor is in cell A1. If you ever have worked for someone that is super particular about formatting, they will likely want you to set all of your worksheets to 100% and your cursors in cell A1 when you do a handover. Two great shortcuts to know for that. Control Home and Alt WJ. Alt WVG will remove grid lines. Most people I've found don't use grid lines and really easy just to turn them off. Control P will allow you to print files. And if you want to set a specific print area, so say you only want to print this selection, Alt PRS will set your print area for you. And what that will do is only print your specific selection. If you want to view what's going to be print, you can use Alt WI, and this will use page break preview. And it will show you only the selection that will be printed by Excel. So if I hit Control P, it will only print this selection. It won't include my zeros or anything else that I put in the rest of this sheet. If you want to go back to the normal view, you can use Alt W L and that will give you a normal view, Alt W I for page break preview, Alt W L for normal view. So those were 50 Excel shortcuts you need to know. I'll do my best to put a link in the description to download this file, but another bonus shortcut, which I'll toss in for free is if you are working on a windows computer and use shift windows S you can screenshot something in your file. So if you want to screenshot this and take it from the YouTube video, you can also do that. I often find that shortcut to be much easier than using the snipping tool or any other option for taking a screenshot. Again, Shift Windows S will let you take a screenshot of a specific selection on your computer. 